the menu of a certain restaurant lists 10 items in column A and 20 items in column B. A family plans to share five items from column A and five items from column B. If none of the items are found in both columns, then how many different combinations of items could the family choose? A, 25, B, 200, C, 3,425, D, 3,907,008, or E, 5.63 times 10 to the power of 10. Okay, so first things first, what do we want to find? What do we want to find out in the question? Well, if we go to near where the question mark is, we'll see that we're asking how many different combinations of items. They've been very helpful here and they've, they've put a technical word in the question, combinations, which tells us exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for combinations of items. Combinations is the situation where order doesn't matter. In contrast with the situation of permutations, we have a, we have a button on our calculator for combinations, so very straightforward to do, as long as we know where the button is. Uh, what are we looking for combinations of? Well, we're looking for five items from column A and five items from column B, total of 10 items, five items from column A and five items in column B. We need to think, what are we picking these five items from? So in column A, there's 10 items, and in column B, there's 20 items. So we're picking five items out of 10 and we're also picking five items out of 20. It's very important we identify that that's and and not all. We're picking five items from 10 and five items from 20. Now that can be written in probability and combinatorics in a, in a standard way. We use our combinations function and we say picking five out of 10 we write 10 C5 and in probability and statistics we always write as a times and picking 5 out of 20 is 20 C5 and we can we can put this directly into our calculator all calculators are different but if we have a reasonable calculator it should have a C button and we can write that directly in if we don't know where it is it's not a problem we have a formula for combinations we can just rewrite this using our formula, standard formula for combinations, which, which should be memorized. We can explain in another place where it's derived from. The formula is that NCR is equal to N factorial over R factorial times by N minus R factorial. N here, as we've already said, is the total number of items that we're selecting from, and R is the number of items selected. And of course, we also have a factorial button on our calculator. So once we've transferred into factorials, again, if we know where the button is, and we should if we're doing an SAT exam, we can just apply it to the calculator. It would be much quicker than doing a manual solution. So we convert our numbers using our formula. We've got 10 C5 is 10 factorial over 5 factorial times by 10 minus 5 factorial is and, so we're multiplying and we multiply by 20 factorial over 5 factorial times by 20 minus 5 factorial. And if we simplify what's in the brackets there, we've got 10 factorial times 20 factorial over 5 factorial times by 5 factorial times by 5 factorial times by 15 factorial. So again, we, we've got a factorial button in our calculator. We put this information into our calculator. Now, in the very extreme situation that our calculator breaks during the exam or we forget where the buttons are, we can still find the answer and we don't need to do a full manual calculation to do it. What we do need to do is we need to cancel out from the factorials any common factors. So if we look 20 factorial on the top and 15 factorial on the bottom, they cancel out to leave us with 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 on the top. Similarly, 10 factorial on the top and 5 factorial on the bottom, they cancel out to give us 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 on the top. And we're left with our two 5 factorials on the bottom. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then there's some obvious common factors that we can see and cancel out here. 
5 times 4 cancels with 20, 3 times 2 cancels with 6, the 5 and the 2 cancel with the 10, the 4 cancels with the 16 to leave 4, and the 3 cancels with the 9 to leave 3. And then if we just look at what we've got on our top, we'll just rewrite it out, but where we've got single digits, we'll just multiply those together. So 19 times 18 times 17, 4 times 3 is 12, and times by 8 times 7 is 56. So at this stage, rather than going ahead and do the calculation, let's look at the answers. This is clearly bigger than 25. It's clearly bigger than 200. Is it bigger than 3,425? Well, imagine they were all 10s. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, times 10 is uh, 100,000 is already bigger than uh, 3,425. So A, B and C we could get rid of straight away. Answer E is written in standard form, 5.63 times 10 to the 10. But we know that even if we don't know our standard form, our standard form tells us there's 10 digits after the 5. But even if we don't know it, we can look and say, well, 5.6 times by 10 to the 1 is, uh, times by 10 is equal to 56. That has one digit after the 5. So if times by 10 to the 1 has one digit after the 5, times by 10 to the 10 has 10 digits after the 5. So we're looking at 5630000000. Let's do 20 times 20 times 20 times 20. You say the 56, let's take 100. That gives us 20 times 20 is 400, times by 400, times by 100. 400 times 400 is 160,000 times 100, which gives us, we should have basically six noughts after our 60 or, or seven digits after, compared with nine digits in our E above. So it's clearly smaller which leaves us with only one solution, which is the 3,907,008. And again, we could put that multiplication into the calculator, um, or we could do it longhand, but it just takes a little bit of time. QED.